I preach the land of love divine, and all its riches freely mine. Here shines undimmed one blissful day, for all my night has passed away. O oh, Beulah land, sweet Beulah land, as on thy highest mount I stand, I look away across the sea, where mansions are prepared for me, and view the shining glory shore, my heaven, my home, forevermore. My Savior comes and walks with me, and sweet communion here have we. He gently leads me by his hand, for this is heaven's borderland. O oh, Beulah land, sweet Beulah land, as on thy highest mount I stand, I look away across the sea, where mansions are prepared for me, and view the shining glory shore, my heaven, my home forevermore. The zephyrs seem to float to me, sweet sounds of heaven's melody, as angels with the white robe throne join in the sweet redemption song. O oh, Beulah land, sweet Beulah land, as on thy highest mount I stand, I look away across the sea, where mansions are prepared for me, and view the shining glory shore, my have my home forevermore. Good morning. I wanted to turn this where y'all could see that beautiful bloom. If I can keep the tree from rocking too much, you get to see some of our junk. But anyway, spring has sprung and it is exciting. Uh, we are continuing our journey through the scriptures. The Israelites have left Egypt. They've had their 40 years wandering in the wilderness under the leadership of Moses. Moses has died, Joshua is the new leader, and they are on to taking the promised land. So we're picking up today in Joshua 3 verse 1 with the Israelites crossing the Jordan. Early the next morning, Joshua and all the Israelites left Achaia and arrived at the banks of the Jordan River where they camped before crossing. Three days later, the Israelite leaders went through the camp giving these instructions to the people. When you see the Levitical priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, follow them. Since you have never traveled this way before, they will guide you. Stay about a half mile behind them, keeping a clear distance between you and the Ark. Make sure you don't come any closer. Then Joshua told the people, Purify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do great wonders among you. In the morning, Joshua said to the priest, Lift up the Ark of the Covenant and lead the people across the river. And so they started out. The Lord told Joshua, Today I will begin to make you great in the eyes of all the Israelites. Now they will know that I am with you, just as I was with Moses. Give these instructions to the priests who are carrying the Ark of the Covenant. When you reach the banks of the, of the Jordan River, take a few steps into the river and stop. So Joshua told the Israelites, come and listen to what the Lord your God says. Today you will know that the living God is among you. He will surely drive out the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Girgashites, Amorites, and Jebusites. Think of it, the Ark of the Covenant, which belongs to the Lord of the whole earth, will lead you across the Jordan River. Now choose 12 men, one from each tribe. The priest, priest will be carrying the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth. 
When their feet touch the water, the flow of water will be cut off upstream and the river will pile up there in one heap. When the people set out to cross the Jordan, the priests who were carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Now it was the harvest season and the Jordan was overflowing its banks. But as soon as the feet of the priests who were carrying the ark touched the water at the river's edge, the water began piling up at a town upstream called Adam, which is near Zarethan. And the water below that point flowed onto the Dead Sea until the riverbed was dry. Then all the people crossed over near the city of Jericho. Meanwhile, the priests who were carrying the ark of the Lord's covenant stood on dry ground in the middle of the riverbed as the people passed by them. They waited there until everyone had crossed the Jordan on dry ground. Memorials to the Jordan crossing, in, beginning in Joshua 4, verse 1. When all the people were safely across the river, the Lord said to Joshua, Now choose twelve men, one from each tribe. Tell the men to take twelve stones from where the priests are standing in the middle of the Jordan and piled them up at the place where you camp tonight. So Joshua called together the twelve men and told them, Go into the middle of the Jordan, in front of the ark of the Lord your God. Each of you must pick up one stone and carry it on your shoulder, twelve stones in all, one for each of the twelve tribes. We will use these stones to build a memorial. In the future, your children will ask, What do these stones mean to you? Then you can tell them, they remind us that the Jordan River stopped flowing when the Ark of the Lord's Covenant went across. These stones will stand as a permanent memorial among the people of Israel. So the men did as Joshua told them. They took 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan River, one for each tribe, just as the Lord had commanded Joshua. They carried them to the place where they camped for the night and constructed the memorial there. Joshua also built another memorial of 12 stones in the middle of the Jordan at the place where the priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant were standing. The memorial re remains there to this day. The priests who were carrying the Ark stood in the middle of the river until all the Lord's instructions, which Moses had given to Joshua, were carried out. Meanwhile, the people hurried across the riverbed, and when everyone was on the other side, the priests crossed over the Ark of the Lord. The armed warriors from the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh led the Israelites across the Jordan, just as Moses had directed. These warriors, about 40,000 strong, were ready for battle, and they crossed over to the plains of Jericho in the Lord's presence. That day, the Lord made Joshua great in the eyes of all the Israelites, and for the rest of his life, they revered him as much as they had revered Moses. The Lord had said to Joshua, Command the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant to come up out of the riverbed. So Joshua gave the command, and as soon as the priests carrying the Ark of the Lord's Covenant came up out of the riverbed, the Jordan River flowed, flooded its banks as before. The people crossed the Jordan on the tenth day of the first month the month that marked their exodus from Egypt. They camped at Gilga, east of Jericho. It was there at Gilga that Joshua piled up the 12 stones taken from the Jordan River. Then Joshua said to the Israelites, in the future, your children will ask, what do these stones mean? Then you can tell them, this is where the Israelites crossed the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the river right before your eyes and he kept it dry until you were all across, just as he did at the Red Sea when he dried it up until we had all crossed over. He did this so that all the nations of the earth might know the power of the Lord and that you might fear the Lord your God forever. When all the Amorite kings west of the Jordan and all the Canaanite kings who lived along the Mediterranean coast heard how the Lord had dried up the Jordan River so the people of Israel could cross, they lost heart and were paralyzed with fear. Israel reestablishes covenant ceremonies, beginning in Joshua 5, verse 2. At that time, the Lord told Joshua, Use knives of flint to make the Israelites a circumcised people again. 
So Joshua used flint, made flint knives and circumcised the entire male population of Israel at Gibeath Haaraloth. Joshua had to circumcise them because all the men who were old enough to bear arms when they left Egypt had died in the wilderness. Those who left Egypt had all been circumcised, but none of those born after the Exodus during the years in the wilderness had been circumcised. The Israelites wandered in the wilderness for 40 years until all the men who were old enough to bear arms when they left Egypt had died, for they had disobeyed the Lord. And the Lord vowed he would not let them enter the land he had sworn to give us, a land flowing with milk and honey. So Joshua circumcised their sons who had not been circumcised on the way to the promised land, those who had grown up to take their father's places. After all the males had been circumcised, they rested in the camp until they were healed. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the shame of your slavery in Egypt, so that place has been called Gilgal to this day. While the Israelites were camped at Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, they celebrated Passover on the evening of the 14th day of the first month, the month that marked their exodus from Egypt. The very next day they began to eat unleavened bread and roasted grain harvested from the land. No manna appeared that day, and it was never seen again. So from that time on, the Israelites ate from the crops of Canaan. The Lord's commander confronts Joshua, beginning in Joshua 5, verse 13. As Joshua approached the city of Jericho, he looked up and saw a man facing him with sword in hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you friend or foe? Neither one, he replied. I am commander of the Lord's army. At this, Joshua fell with his face to the ground in reverence. I am at your command, Joshua said. What do you want your servant to do? The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals, for this is holy ground. And Joshua did as he was told. The fall of Jericho, beginning in Joshua 6, verse 1. Now the gates of Jericho were tightly shut because the people were afraid of the Israelites. No one was allowed to go in or out. But the Lord said to Joshua, I have given you Jericho, its king and all its mighty warriors. Your entire army is to march around the city once a day for six days. Seven priests will walk ahead of the ark, each carrying a ram's horn. On the seventh day, you are to march around the city seven times with the priest blowing the horns. When you hear the priest give one long blast on the horns, have all the people give a mighty shout. Then the walls of the city will collapse and the people can charge straight into the city. So Joshua called together the priest and said, take up the Ark of the Covenant and assign seven priests to walk in front of it, each carrying a ram's horn. Then he gave orders to the people, march around the city and the armed men will lead the way in front of the Ark of the Lord. After Joshua spoke to the people, the seven priests with the ram's horns started marching in the presence of the Lord, blowing the horns as they marched. And the priests carrying the Ark of the Lord's Covenant followed behind them. Armed guards marched both in front of the priest and behind the Ark, with the priests continually blowing the horns. Do not shout, do not even talk, Joshua commanded. Not a single word from any of you until I tell you to shout, then shout. So the ark of the Lord was carried around the city once that day, and then everyone returned to spend the night in the camp. Joshua got up early the next morning, and the priests again carried the ark of the Lord. The seven priests with the ram's horns marched in front of the ark of the Lord, blowing their horns. Armed guards marched both in front of the priest with the horns and behind the ark of the Lord. All this time the priests were sounding their horns. On the second day they marched around the city once and returned to camp. They followed this pattern for six days. On the seventh day the Israelites got up at dawn and marched around the city as they had done before. But this time they went around the city seven times. The seventh time around, as the priests sounded the long blast on their horns, Joshua commanded the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. The city and everything in it must be completely destroyed as an offering to the Lord. 
Only Rahab the prostitute and the others in her house will be spared, for she protected our spies. Do not take any of the things set apart for destruction, or you yourselves will be completely destroyed, and you will bring trouble on all Israel. Everything made from silver, gold, bronze, or iron is sacred to the Lord and must be brought into his treasury. When the people heard the sound of the horns, they shouted as loud as they could. Suddenly the walls of Jericho collapsed, and the Israelites charged straight into the city from every side and captured it. They completely destroyed everything in it, men and women, young and old, cattle, sheep, donkeys, everything. Then Joshua said to the two spies, Keep your promise. Go to the prostitute's house and bring her out along with all her family. The young men went in and brought out Rahab, her father, mother, brothers, and all the other relatives who were with her. They moved her whole family to a safe place near the camp of Israel. Then the Israelites burned the city and everything in it. Only the things made from silver, gold, bronze, or iron were kept for the treasury of the Lord's house. So Joshua spared Rahab the prostitute and her relatives who were with her in her house because she had hidden the spies Joshua sent to Jericho, and she lives among the Israelites to this day. At that time, Joshua invoked this curse. May the curse of the Lord fall on anyone who tries to rebuild the city of Jericho. At the cost of his firstborn son, he will lay its foundation. At the cost of his son, youngest son, he will set up its gates. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his name became famous throughout the land the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So our closing hymn this morning is a bit upbeat, so take a deep breath and sing along with me. Alrighty. I'd like to stay here longer than man's allotted days And watch the fleeting changes of life's uneven ways But if my Savior calls me to that sweet home on high I'll live with Him forever in glory by and by Oh yes, I'll live in glory by and by I'll tell and sing love story there on high, there with my dear Redeemer, no more to die. Oh yes, I'll live in glory by and by. I want to be of service along this pilgrim way and lead the lost to Jesus as fervently I pray. As day by day I travel, I'll keep him ever nigh and live with him forever in glory by and by. Oh yes, I'll live in glory by and by. I'll tell and sing the story there on high, there with my dear Redeemer, no more to die. Oh yes, I'll live in glory by and by. The end I know is nearing, by faith I look away, to yonder home supernal, the land of endless day. I'll cling to him forever and look beyond the sky and live with him forever in glory by and by. Oh, yes, I'll live in glory by and by. I'll tell and sing the story there on high, there with my dear Redeemer, no more to die. Oh, yes, I'll live in glory by and by. Let's see. Good morning, Rhonda. Good morning, Pam. Good morning, John. Yeah, I'm outside um, in the backyard of my mother's in-law's house, so you'll see the garden as it comes up. Of course, right now it's all just plowed up, and you can see we really need to mow the grass. But um, anyway, but the blooms are pretty on that tree, and the apple trees are thinking about it. <laughs> we got this little peach tree, I think, over here. But it is wonderful to watch spring, and it feels so much more like spring than it has in a long time after the, the dark year we've had. So I'm thoroughly enjoying this spring. Good morning, Mary Beth. Good morning, Jim and Peggy. Good morning, Shirley. Good morning, Patty. 
Hope everybody enjoys this wonderful, beautiful day. And I'll see y'all back tomorrow morning at 8.